I wanted to just highlight that quote for everybody. Um, I heard this unbelievable woman, and I want to do more research about her. I've noted her at the bottom of the slide. Um, and and she was talking about perception, you know, in this time of, a, of elections. People were doing all sorts of stories on how do we persuade people. And, you know, that's really what negotiation is um, in some respects. It's an effort to persuade someone um, to... Uh, do what you want. That's kind of crass. I think it's a little more nuanced and we'll get to that. But the quote was changing someone's mind is like asking them to change their clothes. Most people don't want to do that while people are watching them. Okay. The other thing is, and I realized I was thinking about that quote. Um, I have a 14 year old daughter and Maybe you can relate to this. Those days when they tell you they're totally upset, they can barely talk. I don't have a thing to wear, right? So not only is they want to change clothes in private, but it's the case oftentimes that people don't see what's in their closet. If I can carry this analogy a little too far, they don't know, they can't see what all their options are. And that's a result of a lot of different things. And then when you get two people together or groups together, um, negotiation over a problem or to do a deal can present the same challenges is that everybody that's involved in it feels like they don't have anything to wear when there are really closets full of options and no one can see them. Um, so I just wanted you to reflect on that a little bit. Let's go to the next slide. Um, this is something you guys will have the slides available to you later and you can go back. I just wanted to, to put here in a safe space a, a few resources in case you end up interested in learning more about negotiation. Um, the Harvard, the newsletter, I get an email almost every day from the program on negotiation at Harvard. Um, since it's not your field, it is my field, it's not your field, so you can get rid of a lot of them, but there are some that might really capture your interest. Um, there's also a TED Talk I might have bugged you with. It's a, um, I think it's 15 minutes long, but I only ever play for my students about the first 12 minutes of it, called The Power of Listening by William Urey. It's a TED Talk. You can find it really easily. He's the guy, he's one of the co-authors of the book, Getting to Yes, if that rings a bell. He also wrote Getting Past No, and it goes on and on. He's written a million books. Um, and, and a lot of what we're going to talk about today are ideas about negotiating that he and his partner in the Harvard Negotiation Project kind of put out there. There are other schools, you guys, of theory and skills in negotiation. I I think a lot of them tend to be more power-based, um, understanding power, manipulating, using power, and I don't tend to approach it that way. Um, so this is the material that resonates for me in the work I do. Um, so I wonder if it's relevant, the work I do, Casey and Bincy. I, I am a lawyer by original training, and I was a trial lawyer for 19 years, um, mostly doing business-related litigation. Um, personal injury, that kind of stuff. Um, toward the end of that, I was introduced to this idea of mediating. I took some of my own lawsuits into mediation to try and settle them. I then got trained as a mediator and I started working. And then ultimately, since 2002, I've worked strictly as a mediator and I don't represent clients anymore. So I came to this field through litigation, which is very um, positional, hard fought stuff, trying to negotiate resolutions to that. I have since in the last few years, more and my more of my work is in settings that don't involve litigation, higher ed, churches, workplaces, when there's conflict in small groups or larger groups um, and using different mediation is not the best thing for every kind of conflict. So um, I've gotten more experience in a wider range of processes that can be sort of tailored to fit, fit the dispute. So that's my background. Um, next slide. So this is what I was thinking that we would do today, you guys. Um, my learning objectives. One is negotiation awareness. I, and I don't need to say much more about that. I, I think we could be negotiating more than we do for, for the good. I think we kind of unilaterally reject opportunities to negotiate that other folks present us with all the time. Uh, and I don't even know if we know that we're doing it. Um, 
So I want to I want to build a little on negotiation awareness too. I want to delve into as, as theory and knowledge. I want to get you some experience that could help you learn to distinguish needs and interests from positions. Because that today, my spiel today, in large part, is that that's your most that's your sweet spot for how to come to better outcomes in your professional and personal life. Um, third, if we have time, I'd like to do a skill building, a couple skill building exercises. Um, you might have heard of summarizing and reframing. If you've ever gone to a seminar on listening tools, um, communication skills, um, those are part of negotiation is probably the most interdisciplinary field that I can imagine you guys. And we take lots of good stuff from other fields and um, listening skills um, in negotiating are really important. Um, and and then finally, I wanted to to sort of finish off with another kind of skill building, um, what I would call a learning conversation. And I've borrowed that from um, some authors that I really like, and I'll mention them later. So that's sort of what I'm thinking for today. Um, so before I launch down that road, though, I want to get you guys started on this journey of negotiation awareness. And in the course of this exercise, I'm wondering if you'll have some ideas for what you'd like to be sure we talk about today. I can bag this agenda, you guys. I can talk about negotiation forever. Um, I can tell you stories about a negotiation here or there. If you've got one you'd like to debrief with the group, we could do that and I can weave in um, the material with that. Um, so this first time for you to talk will be a chance to sort of figure out how you want this to go for, for the time that we've got. So this is what I've suggested that we do. Um, it turns out you don't have to introduce yourselves in breakout rooms because you're really small. We could stay in this large group if you want. Some of us won't talk. Some of us will just listen. Bincy and Casey, what I'd like to be sure you get a chance to do um, is Describe a negotiation you've been involved with within the last two weeks. Um, initially, I put here, describe it in two to three sentences. That's really hard to do. Try not to explain it. Just give the other person an idea of what it was about. Um, make sure that everyone who wants to share a negotiation for the last two weeks gets a chance to do that. Now, we're small, so you have we have plenty of time. Um, what I'd like you to do after that is see if you can describe a negotiation you've been part of in the last 36 hours. Something other than the one you described before, but a negotiation that's happened in the last 36 hours or that's maybe coming up, you can foresee is coming up. Keep it to two to three sentences and be sure everyone gets a turn. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is reflect on our conversation and maybe write down a question about negotiation that you'd like us to tackle today. So, um, and maybe this is a good time, Dale, that I remind everybody this is being recorded. So if people aren't comfortable, we can put them in a breakout, a breakout room together room. because that will not be recorded. That's a, I think that's what we'd want to do. I think that's important. Um, so Bincy and Casey, um, I'd like you to have a chance to share this with each other without me listening in. I somehow, mm -hmm. I sometimes think that impacts people's um, ability to share. Um, so how does that sound? Bincy and Casey, you up for going into a breakout room? Sure. And sharing that? That would be great. So first you want to talk about a negotiation from the last couple of weeks. But then I want you to try and see if you can identify one that's happened really, really recently. Like I mean, in the last day and a half. So this is the area of theory that we're gonna try and turn into practice, you guys. And the shift that we're talking about, and I think you both are, from what you're saying, are, are intuitively understand this. We're gonna be shifting from what you hear about in the media and stuff as what I would call distributive negotiation, very competitive. Um, the goal of every negotiation is to get the most I can. There isn't a whole lot of thought about what that is. It often means dollars. I'm going to get the best. We're going to, this negotiation is going to end up distributing the bucks, whether it's on a lease or um, 
an hourly rate, I'm going to get the most that I can out of this. And what I'm going to suggest is that a more useful way, and Bincy's already started to allude to it, even in her reference to your stories, Casey, is to an integrative negotiation, an approach that's intended to meet the needs of and interests to the greatest extent possible for everyone in the negotiation. So those are vocabulary terms, you guys, in the negotiation field. I want to I want to help you in real life practice. Did you guys? I forgot to ask if you guys got the handouts. Did you Did you get the handouts? Yeah. All right. I want to try something with all of us together. Um, Dale, even though, Dale, are you advancing the slides? I did. I thought I did. Yeah, because we're, we're still on negotiation, or I'm still on negotiation awareness. Shoot, my all my screens say. Uh, hmm. If you hit the space bar, it should advance you, Dale. There you go. Wait, whoa. I think if you just keep it on that so that you don't have any other issues, that would be helpful. If I did. Just keep it on that, on that, I mean, keep it at that size. I don't think you need to put it up to a full screen. Yeah, that yeah. works. Okay. So do you guys see the slide that says ugly orange negotiation, the background facts? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you've got um, um, a handout that has the role play information for Dr. Roland. Do you see that? It says the ugly orange challenge, confidential instructions for Dr. Roland. Yeah. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the time to do this, you guys, because if it does what I think, this role play, if this is all we get done today, I think it might be helpful to you. So mm -hmm. let me just preview this for you. Dr. Jones and Dr. Roland are two scientists representing rival pharmaceutical companies. What you'll find when you read your facts is that these two companies have been involved in litigation against each other in the past. So there's not a lot of trust going on here. Each doctor has developed a product that will address a needed public good in their respective fields. Each of these products is made from the ugly orange. I'm one of the doctors, you guys. Um, I'm Dr. Jones. You are Dr. You are all together going to be Dr. Roland. Because these scientists can't do their work without that ugly orange, um, they've been directed by their companies to acquire the entire crop of ugly oranges grown this year worldwide. If they're not very many, as you'll see when you read your material. Most of those oranges are controlled by one fruit exporter. And both companies have directed their doctors, these research guys, to meet together to see if they can develop a joint proposal to present to the exporter. So what I'm going to ask you to do, so I'm, do, I'm, I'm Dr. Jones and I need these oranges. You guys are Dr. Roland and you need these oranges too. What I'm going to ask you to do is quickly read your materials, and then we're going to negotiate this in a little fishbowl right here. And Bincy and Casey, you guys don't need to coordinate your approach. You will just be that doc. You'll be the same person, and you'll just take turns jumping in, how whatever makes sense to you. And you'll be negotiating with me, the other doctor, who wants those ugly oranges just as badly as you do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so take a minute and read your material. So I think it might be helpful that you have a co-negotiator will help, right? You don't have to completely master these facts. And what I really mm -hmm. wanna remind you about Bincy and Casey, you don't have, if you were in a normal, if I was teaching you to negotiate as a team, we, I'd give you time to talk, but you're not going to do this as a team. You're just going to jump in wherever it makes sense to you. Um, and you won't, if, you're, if your quote unquote partner says something you wouldn't have said, you're not going to worry about that because we're all going to just experiment to see where this goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to start the fishbowl. We're going to give this, I think uh, maybe 10 minutes. We'll see what happens. It, we might, we might, learn what we need to in even shorter time. So I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Dr. Jones. This is I'm, our- I'm, I'm Dr. Lo Roland. How do you do, Dr. Roland? Um, I, um, I'm glad we could get together today. 
I'm glad too. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little about, about my situation. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, I'm employed by uh, a company uh, that your company has, we've, we've had our ups and downs, but um, I've developed a medicine that cures and prevents a disease called rudocin. It's contracted by pregnant women and it causes serious brain, eye and ear damage in unborn kids. It has to be treated in the first four weeks of pregnancy. And there's a recent outbreak um, in my um, state and several thousand um, pregnant women have contracted this disease. Um, I have found a cure for it. My team has found a cure. We've gotten FDA approval for it. Um, unfortunately, this was rushed. We did find it, that's all the good news. The bad news is um, we have to have ugly oranges um, and we have to get our hands. We understand that this exporter um, has, um, 3,000, uh, let's see, I, th I think he's got, yeah, he, I've got to try and get 3,000 of those ugly oranges, and I've got to get them as fast as I can, and um, I've got a certain amount of authority dollar-wise to try and get those, uh, but that's my goal. Um, hmm. Dr. Jones, you said that um, there have been several uh, thousand, can, can you be more specific on the number of cases that have broken out, and is it contained to your state? Um, as far as I know, um, several thousand in total in a broader geographic area than my state have contracted it. But there is an outbreak in my state, and we're worried that it's going to get bigger. So um, you need 3,000 um, ugly oranges, or is that something that... Um, I've been told that this guy that that the exporter has three thousand. Okay. I, I would like more than three thousand, but I my understanding is that's the most that he has. Okay. So what about so, you guys? Can you tell me a little about what's going on for you? Well, um, yeah, we are in in the middle of research, and um, we've we've identified some solutions for for the the problems that we're having, and um, it looks like we're both needing the same um, same um, product to resolve our issue. Um, and uh, we're aware of the gentleman that um, has ugly oranges as well. And it looks like, well, we're, we're, in, the, uh, we're in the same boat as you are in trying to acquire um, ugly oranges as well. I think one of the things that, um, you know, the reason why I ask how many um, that you're referring to is because um, the situation that we are in is that um, there are uh, leaks um, that can go into the atmosphere and um, it can spread throughout the atmosphere, um, particularly Los Angeles. And I think that we both know the population of Los Angeles. And if this is airborne and we have the opportunity to be able to treat this with the oranges that uh, Dr. Cardoza has, you know, we have the potential of saving millions in this. And so, you know, I know you need this to save, you know, um, pregnant women and, and we need to save, we need to use these um, uh, oranges, uh, ugly oranges, you know, to, to really potentially, you know, save higher, potentially millions, um, that stop, several thousands will incur brain damage as a result of that. But it appears that we're at a crossroads trying to go for the same thing. So um, mm -hmm. have you had any initial thoughts on um, what a compromise in the circumstance might look like? I, I'm, I'm, um, it's challenging, isn't it? It's really challenging. I mean, one of the things I might do for you, I might do if information would be helpful, if we're gonna approach this as it, you know, like what's the most life-saving we can do, I'm, I'm satisfied, I think, but I don't have the numbers to give you um, that if we don't, if I don't get those oranges and get enough of this medicine made, we're gonna lose, um, we're gonna lose a ton of, um, it won't be death, but but this illness 
causes serious brain, eye, and ear damage in unborn children. And it has to be, the pregnant women have to get it within the first four weeks of pregnancy. So really, we're talking about needing to inoculate as many pregnant women in the world as we can, or we're going to have legions of brain-damaged children with problems with their hearing. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not sure I know how to, how to compare the potential impacts here, here. but, but the one I'm looking at is really uh, horrendous. Yeah. You know, I think we're both in the same situation that both circumstances are really horrendous and, and we need to get access to those because, you know, I know that, you know, they need to be done within the first four weeks of their pregnancies. You know, ours is an airborne gas that actually gets, you know, spread out into, into communities that can, can ult ultimately, I think have same similar impact that your situation is having on an unborn children. Ours is actually having that on several thousand, you know, people. And yeah. so we got to um, start maybe perhaps thinking about what, what can we do to try to get to um, something. How imminent, how imminent is the, is the dispersal of this thing? Like, like how soon is it going to happen that people are going to be exposed to this? Um, the, the um, that's that's a great question. It it, it appears um, these uh, World War II bombs are being moved um, and being transported, and the leaks um, they they've had a control. They believe it's going to permeate. Um, the gas is going to permeate the bomb within two weeks. So our timeline on this is is okay. severely immediate. I suppose we could explore whether this is going to be solved by a bidding war and whether one of us has more money than the other to try and grab these. If I was a really positional negotiator, that's what I would do, you guys. Is so I now would, you're, yeah, now you're. But let me ask you guys this. Numbers. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I prefer to see us all be able to, um, do our work for the benefit of the most people. Um, how do you guys, can I ask, um, how does the orange, how does the orange, um, how do you guys use it? In the product itself, are you asking how, how it's used? Yeah, for the sir, is it, yeah I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm, j I'm just exploring because I don't know quite how to, yeah, the chemicals from the skins um, can be used to neutralize the gas. If the serum is, uh, if, if, the, if with our serum is uh, developed and injected efficiently. You said you need the skin. Do you, what, do you need anything besides the skins? Like in no. the production process or anything? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go and reread this over and over. I know, um, yeah. <laughs> well, because you know what it turns out, you guys? My medicine is made from the juice of the ugly orange. Huh. What do you so, think? If there was a way that we could purchase these together and we take the skins and you take the juice, we would both accomplish and being able to save the lives or the brain damage from both. Yes. So it's 1250, you guys, and we did, we just did the fastest role play of the ugly orange dilemma ever. I can, I can I keep love people. It. So, so do you get what we did here? Yes. How would you describe it? I mean, we were able to solve both problems. Um, although in, in the beginning, it looked like we're going to have a big fight for the 3000 oranges, right? And that's where I was, you know, my mind was stuck on that. I didn't even bother to ask the question of how it's used. So I would tell you guys in groups of 20 to 30 people that are in groups of two, I would say maybe 20% of the groups, somebody asks the question, how are you going to use the orange? Mm. All the other groups, they do all kinds of things. They spend a lot of time arguing over whose cause is most righteous, you know, is either 
most righteous. It's more important to save babies than it is the city of Los Angeles or whose is more urgent. Some groups, they split, they truly split the baby. They make an agree what what I would call a compromise, not an integrative solution, but they basically split the baby. You get we'll go to him, you'll get fifteen hundred oranges, and and they offer each other all sorts of side bennies, so that one will only take half the oranges and the other will take half. So they each get something of what they want. They never discover the one little sentence in each role play. Yours has one little sentence that says. You need the skins. I have one little sentence that says I need the fruit. And so a bunch of groups never discover that. Mm. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the and, and Bincy, your your comment was really what a lot of people would say is the the what happens is they hear the problem that needs to be solved as a direct conflict, right? And then it's really hard to know what to do with that unless you want to compete and oh by the way you should see students like law school students and stuff they start competing like crazy they start you know and of course none of us have that much money to work with we've only got authority to spend up to 250 i think you guys do too so it's not like we can outbid each other but they try to explore ways to do that mm. so um so one of the things i'll point out um let me go to the I'll stop there for a sec. Casey really started us on the right foot. Just as she leaves the room, I'm about to like really um, pat her on the back. <laughs> but um, she started asking questions and trying mm -hmm. to gather more information. And right. I think that's really, that's really the secret here. Is what happens is, and Bincy, you you just articulated it perfectly. If you can't see... It looks like a direct conflict and you can't see an easy way to distribute for a distributive solution. Like you get this many oranges, I get, you know, an easy split it kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. really hard to think of more solution, but I'm going to hold out to you. That's because you don't have enough information yet. Yeah. And when Casey started talking um, and not understanding the whole situation, I felt like, okay, this is an easy decision because if you, you know, you get 1500, I get 1500. Right. And, and we'll just make do with that to solve yes. as much as we can. And Bincy, that's a distributive solution. Yeah. Uh, I, we only see the problem as a, we got to divide resources. Mm. Everybody loses, right? Mm -hmm. We just, carve out the pie. The pie is very limited and we'll just carve it this way. Casey, mm -hmm. I was pointing out while you were gone that you really got to start it on the right foot by asking questions and looking for more information. And that's really the, the, the key, you guys, is that people try to solve the problem before they have information that could suggest what I, what I would call an integrative solution, a solution that searches hardest for a way to meet the needs and interests of both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me let me go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to let you guys. You'll get a copy of these, and um, you can play with them. I'd spend more time on it if we had it, but I want to get you to a couple of other things. Okay. Um, so, what you want to do to to make this in a, um, this negotiation process more productive is to create a free flow of information and Casey opened the door for that. I would suggest you guys, you get curious. That question that I asked, well, so how are you going to use the orange? Now, I feel like I'm cheating because I knew I needed to ask that question, but you'd be surprised how a lot of people do think to just relax and talk and find out what the other guy needs. So tell me more about what you need. That sentence, right? Tell me more about that. You said you'd need the orange for this. Tell me more about that. That Those big open-ended questions where you will learn and gather information. I, it's a learning conversation. You get curious. So instead of trying to solve the problem quickly, because here you're not going to get the best solution if you try to do it quickly, okay? So let me get to this little, um, 
So the, the key here, you guys, is recognizing the difference between when you're negotiating with someone, what their position is and what their needs and interests are. Their position is, I need all 3,000 oranges. Why? And their argument for their position is, because I'm doing good work and I'm going to save a lot of people, right? Those are their positions. But the interests are the underlying needs that drive those positions. And you're, I, I'm going to hold out to you that you will never get the best resolution is if, if everybody argues their positions. You guys, you see this in politics all the time. So many problems we could solve, but we argue at the position level. We don't go underneath to the needs and interests level. So, and the way you find out needs and interests is you, you just talk. You just have a good conversation. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, there, there are problems, you guys. The approach that I'm proposing to you isn't um, easy because there usually is a distributional element. There is some point in the game, we got to divide up some part of a pie, right? It might be money, it might be price. You know, somebody's negotiating for a price on a new building and you can only get so far to the price you want, but what else could you get along with that price? That's what we're looking for. So, um, um, where's it? Oh, I wanted to show you guys this little chart. Because you've got negotiations coming up, I wanted you to think about this a little. And if we'd had time, I was going to try to fill out this chart with you a little. So, what I do, and I, I really get my students doing this, and I do it in my head in every personal professional negotiation, I'm a, a relationships. First, you can, if you've got a negotiation, you, you write out what are the positions of my, what are my positions and arguments? What are the other guys' positions and arguments? This space is worth this per square foot, and here are all the comparables, and here are my arguments and proof that the space is worth this much per square foot, okay? But what are the needs and interests underlying that? And in preparing to negotiate with somebody, if you think as carefully as you can about what their needs and interests might be, well, I know they've got data to show it's worth this. But what else do I know about them that says they might be willing to take less? Is it vacancy rates lately? Is it um, particular individual economic pressures that that person is under? And what you do to prepare is get real clear about your needs and interests. And, and note, by the way, where your needs and interests are in conflict, because sometimes you're a little bit at war with yourself. Yeah. You know, is my relationship with this, this um, seller more important long term than getting the absolute best price that I can right now? And, and we, we do do internal negotiating while we're negotiating with somebody else because we have needs and interests that compete with each other. And we're trying to negotiate with ourselves which ones take priority. So try and get as clear as you can about that before you go into a negotiation. Speculate a little about what the other guy's needs and interests might be, but don't make any assumptions. They're all hypotheses. You might, you might imagine a lot of different potential interests they have and they may never tell you exactly what their needs and interests are. But if you help them surface that, if you ask them about that, see what they'll surface in the negotiation, the two of you can probably find better ways to negotiate a better deal than if you approached it. Bincy, you did such a good job of articulating it. In the oranges, they looked so oppositional. It looked like what we were going to have to do is just satisfy ourselves with splitting the 3,000 oranges. I'm going to hold out to you in most situations, there's a better solution than that. Okay? Hey, Dale. Just in yeah, the we're, we're, we're time. ti time's up, huh? We're at 1 o'clock. Is there anything else that uh, maybe Casey or Bincy can do to get more information from you? I know you've handed out those. Um, Bonnie sent out the handouts. But if there's any other additional things you want to uh, share with them in, in regards to your final thoughts. 
you know, the article that I attached was a, you guys, I have so many, there's book, I have books and all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think, feel free to email me if you've got questions about specific things or specific resources you're looking for. You don't want to get inundated from me with a 20 million long list of books, right? Um, the article that I gave you, I thought was a, was good and insightful. Um, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything specific or specific resource you'd like to be turned toward? Uh, Bincy, I think Bincy. you're talking, but you're muted. Um, there's, I just got three documents. Um, one of them is the summarizing and neutral language exercise. That was a skill exercise we were going to work on if we had more time. So that's not going to do you any good. But there is an article, I think. Um, I just see three things. The ugly oh. role in role playing, summarizing worksheet PDF. So, um, Dale, if you want to get that to Bonnie, Bonnie can send it yes. out to everybody. Yeah, yeah I'll send it out with the slides. Perfect. You know, what's kind of funny, you guys, and a lot of um, magazines like O Magazine, I'm trying to think of others, some of the best people on negotiation, now there's really crummy people out there that do all these articles on power-based negotiation and how to win, 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 how to get the other guy. That's a very popular thing to talk about right now because that's what our leader, our national leader has held himself out as a brilliant negotiator. And I've really had to work with my students about... Um, sort of sort of an alternate to that to be and to being effective in a way that feels good to them do you know what I mean and that works in the environments they work in um, but you'll you'll bump across good articles once in a while in popular um, magazines and media and so this is one that I grabbed 